Hello QST readers worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I am here to give you the video that goes with the February 2023 QST. This is the video supplement. Here's what I said in the article. In this month's supplemental video, I show how the forward and reflected waves interact with each other. You can find this in the QSTS Day playlist, and it gives the playlist in there. The key thing to note is that that playlist is also up here, and that the last character in there, it looks like an I, it's actually uh, the number one. So you'll need to make that last digit the number one. The font used by the league makes them look very much alike. Uh, a lowercase l, an uppercase i, or a uh, number one are all the same character. Now in that, I promised that we would take a look at uh, what SWR really is and how the waves flow along the transmission line. This is um, the subject of a video I did back in uh, 2016. Uh, and I did this in much more depth. I also gave a presentation on this at the uh, Duke City Ham Fest in 2018. So I'm going to take just a piece of that and present it to you. And we're going to talk about the definition of SWR, how it's actually calculated, what it means physically, what the waveforms look like on the transmission line, in a simple sense, I'm not taking waves that are reflected back and forth multiple times. Okay, so, um, and then we'll take a look at this short excerpt and then come back at the end. We will focus entirely on the connection between the transmission line and the antenna. This is the point of impedance mismatch. The incident, or forward wave, is traveling from your transceiver toward the antenna. It hits the impedance mismatch where the 50 ohm transmission line meets the antenna input. If the antenna presents a 50 ohm purely resistive impedance, there will be no reflection. However, as we'll discover, that's rarely the case, so some of the power, shown in blue, will be reflected back toward the transmitter. The Greek letter rho, and yes, it looks like a P, but it's really the Greek equivalent of a lowercase r, is the coefficient of reflection. Everything here is done in voltage. That's an important point to remember. So if the forward wave is 10 volts and the reflected wave is 2 volts, the magnitude of the reflection coefficient is 2 divided by 10, or 0 0.2. Rho is a complex number, with the phase angle representing the phase of the reflected signal relative to the incident signal. But we don't need to know the phase angle to calculate SWR, so we just use the magnitude of Rho, shown here as the absolute value, which is equivalent to the magnitude. Now, the SWR can be figured by the formula shown in pink, which we'll talk about more later. In passing, I show a general model of an antenna so you can see how this works. The antenna has two types of resistance, radiation resistance and ohmic resistance. The radiation resistance acts like any resistance, except instead of creating heat, it creates RF energy that propagates away from the antenna. The ohmic resistance is that portion of the antenna resistance that actually results in heat. But note that antennas also contain reactive elements, so the total antenna impedance can contain both resistive and reactive components. That's enough on antennas for the moment. This animated drawing from Wikipedia shows the classic explanation of a standing wave. This case, which in practice would mean a completely broken antenna system, has a reflection coefficient of 1, meaning all the power is reflected, leaving none to be radiated. The forward wave is in blue, and you can see the arrow following the crest of the blue wave from the transmitter toward the antenna. The reflected wave is in red, 
and you can follow the arrow to see it head back toward the transmitter. Now, the black wave is the instantaneous sum of the two waves. It looks like a wave just standing there. It isn't going anywhere, so the sum of the power transfer is zero. Okay, let's look in the bottom box. By definition, the standing wave ratio, or SWR, is the ratio of the peak voltage of the combined waveform divided by the combined waveform's minimum voltage. Note that the peak value of the combined waveform is 2 volts, and the minimum is 0 volts peak for a ratio of infinity. This figure therefore represents the worst case, when zero power makes it past the impedance mismatch to be radiated. I emphasize again, this is not what happens in actual practice. I created this animation to show a much more common scenario. The dark blue waveform is the forward or incident voltage waveform going from the transmitter on the left to the antenna on the right as shown by the red arrow that follows along. Its peak value is 1 volt. The red wave is the voltage of the reflected wave traveling from the antenna input back toward the transmitter as shown by the red arrow. The value is one half that of the incident wave, or a half volt in this case. Thus the reflection coefficient is 0.5 or one half. The cyan or light blue waveform is the instantaneous sum of the incident and reflected waveforms. Let's study this. Note that since actual power is being transferred, the sum wave isn't actually standing anymore, but we still call it that. The sum waveform's highest peak is 1.5 volts, but its lowest peak value is at 0.5 volts. From this we can compute the SWR directly as the ratio of 1.5 to 0.5, or 3. By the way, we can compute this from the reflection coefficient also. Rho is 0.5, so SWR by formula is 1 plus 0.5 divided by 1 minus 0.5 for an answer of 3, or 3 to 1. Now let's just look at one more thing here. SWR is voltage. The term voltage SWR, or VSWR, often pronounced VSWR, is synonymous with SWR. But let's look at this in watts. A 1 volt waveform on a 50 ohm line represents a forward power of just 0.02 watts, and the reflected voltage of 1 half volt represents a power of 0.005 watts. Thus, the percentage of the power reflected back is 25%. So note the difference in terms of dealing in voltage with 50% reflected back and dealing in power with 25% reflected back. So there you have it. I hope that gives you a little better feel for what's happening on the uh, waveform with SWR and how that works with uh, cables and so on. And so, until we next meet for the March issue of QST 73.